Hello YouTube, Richard Scott here. Today is August 17th of 2021 and just checking out our late summer splits here and they are incredibly active. So what is going on here? All right, first off, I come down here earlier this morning and checked all of these to make sure they produce the queens and are looking good. And all but two of these uh, nuke boxes have uh, laying queens now. In fact, some of those already have some good cat brood. Uh, again, we did the splits right after we pulled honey earlier this summer. But one thing I found this morning, we had a little bit of an issue. We're just coming out of summer dearth, or we're still technically in it. Uh, but we are getting close to getting out of summer dearth. And uh, a lot of these nukes were kind of low on honey. Some were really low on honey, but others were uh, kind of getting a little iffy borderline. So I said, I've got to feed these bees quickly. And how do you do that? All at the same time. Uh, some of these, I, I use these um, these metal paint cans. I've got another video on my YouTube channel of how we do that. Uh, but let me show you what I do. I'm going to cross the field here. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can see it or if you can hear it. It looks like a massive swarm coming across this field. <laughs> it's just crazy. So across this field, I've got uh, one of these big plastic clothing bins. And I've got this thing filled with sugar water. And what I do, because we've had a lot of rain here lately, so I've got this thing where there's a lid on top, and I drill these two-inch holes all the way around the side, but on the top part of this container. So the bees can get in, but rainwater will not get in. This is incredible. Look at the bees going in here. So inside this container, I've got some hay and some straw so the, and some leaves so the bees won't drown as they go in. But they can go in these holes. It's all the way around the top part of this, but it's under the lip of the, the lid so rainwater can't get in. But the bees can get in. And they can take advantage of those resources, but that is just so cool to watch. What they do, they take the sugar water all the way back over there across the field. And it's about 100 yards, which is kind of the recommendation, I guess, to prevent robbing. But there's all the nukes over there. So these bees, they come get sugar water. I can put 10 gallons at a time in there. They'll actually drink every bit of that uh, within a couple of hours. And I'll do a couple of rounds of these feedings, and then uh, that should be it. I'll check the nukes, and they should be uh, topped off pretty well with uh, sugar water, which they'll convert into honey. And that's uh, our process. Just makes it a little easier this time of the year. We can do kind of mass feeding at the same time. Uh, fortunately, there's not a lot of other native bees around here or other beekeepers around here. If you have a lot of beekeepers in your area, that might not work as efficiently because other bees are going to get to that sugar water too but these pretty much have it all to themselves all right that's all it is just want to kind of show you how we do this and, and by the way I, I mix the sugar water uh, this time of year about a one to one one part sugar one part water uh, later in the fall as we get into like October November I'll do a two part sugar one part water if needed uh, but I'm going to try to fill these uh, nukes up so they'll be uh, good to go. And by the way, we've had a lot of rain this year, so we should have a good fall flow. Uh, our, let's see, we have goldenrod that's about to come out. That's a major nectar source in the fall. So we are just about to see that take effect. So I'm basically just topping these nukes off, helping them out a little bit uh, to get to the fall flow. It's all about keeping these girls alive.